everybody, it's Miss Hamill and I'm here today to talk to you about carbon and organic chemistry and particularly the molecular diversity of life. So your objective is to understand the properties of carbon that make it so important for life on earth. So organic chemistry is going to be the branch of chemistry that specializes in the study of carbon compounds. Organic compounds are any compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen, but mostly carbon is the, the key thing. The major elements of life are carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And carbon can form many large, complex, and diverse molecules, and these molecules can be known as macromolecules. It has four valence electrons, or tetravalence, which allows it to form up to four covalent bonds with other atoms. And if you can remember, covalent bonds mean that they are going to share electrons. So the most frequent bonding partners are going to be hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So the bonds can either be single, double, or triple covalent bonds. And as it increases in the number of bonds, it increases in the strength of that bond as well. So carbon can form these large complex molecules and these complex molecules are essential to life and there are four comp classes of these macromolecules which means large molecules and they are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids and we'll talk all about each one individually in the next lecture. These molecules can either make chains, rings, or be branched. So you can see that the structure of the molecule is going to differ based on the bonding of the molecules. So ethane and propane contain the same um, atoms, but it's just the number of carbons that differ. Here we have the butane and butane 2, and it's going to be the position of the bond or the double bond. Branching, so whether or not there are branches, going to have the same number of um, carbons, just different branches. And then the presence of rings, so do they fold in on themselves to form rings? Carbon diversity um, continued, they can form isomers. And what isomers are, molecules that have the same molecular formula but differ in atom arrangement. So they're going to have the same number of each atoms but they'll differ in arrangements of that molecule. So different structures are going to lead to different functions or different properties. So remember from our earlier lectures, function and pro um, structure go hand in hand. So we can have structural isomers, and this is going to vary in covalent arrangements. So where the bonds are located. We have cis-trans isomers, and this is going to differ in spatial arrangement. So where, again, molecules or atoms are located within the molecule. And then we have antimeters, which are going to be mirror images of the molecules. So they'll look like exactly the same but opposite pretty much okay so form affects function and there is a particular story or case of um, form affecting function in drug manufacturing so there's this drug that was prescribed to pregnant women in the 1950s and 60s called the malthilamide and this drug was prescribed for reducing morning sickness in women so it was good however in the body it would change shape and cause birth defects so it would become bad so when the women took it they took it as this shape and then it changed into the opposite mirror image shape so it was an intameter so the good converts to the bad in the woman's body and then its negative effects was causing these birth defects in the babies so now it is used to treat cancers, leprosy, and HIV. However, it was really a bad thing in the 1950s and 60s, and women and people were warned not to take this drug because of the birth defects. So intameters are important in the pharmacological sense. Uh, many of our drugs 
are in Tamadur. So ibuprofen, for example, a condition that it treats is pain and inflammation. So S-ibuprofen is going to be effective. It will treat the patient. And albuterol, similarly, um, it treats the asthma. Okay, so continuing with the diversity of molecules, um, the substitution of other atoms or groups around the carbon can, again, change the molecule that we're working with. Ethane and ethanol is an example. So if you look here, we have our ethane molecule. If you add um, the hydroxyl group here, it becomes an ethanol. So you replace one of the H's with an OH and it becomes ethanol. So the difference is one is a gas and the other is a liquid. One is nonpolar and the other is polar. And the biological effects are different as well. All right, so next is the functional group. So there are components of organic molecules that are involved in the chemical reactions. They give organic molecules their distinctive properties. For example, male and female hormones. So the basic structure of the male and female hormone is identical. However, the functional groups are different. So they have an identical carbon skeleton, but the attachment of different functional groups. And they interact with different targets in the body. So here's our example. Um, the female lion has a different functional group than the male. So the testosterone and the estrogen or estradiol is different. Um, same carbon skeleton here. However, there's a different functional group attached to that carbon skeleton and differs in the function because the structure is different. Different. So there are seven of the most common functional groups include hydroxyl, carbonyl, carboxyl, amino, sulfhydryl, phosphate, and methyl. And they affect the reactivity of these molecules. They are hydrophilic, so they like water and they increase the solubility in water. So hydrophilic increased solubility. So the first one is hydroxyl, and this is the OH. And these compounds with OH are alcohols, and the names typically end in all. So an example would be ethanol. And this here is the molecule of ethanol. Then we have our carbonyl, and they are C, double bonded with an O, and if the CO is at the end of the molecule, it is aldehyde, and if it is CO in the middle of the molecule, it is a ketone. And you can see at the top, it looks generally like this, and this is, since at the end of the molecule, it will look like that, whoa, 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 that would be a um, aldehyde, and then if it was in the middle, it would be a ketone. Okay, then we have our carboxyl, which is CO, C-O-O-H. It is a C double bonded to an O and a single bonded to an OH group. The example um, would be acids, so fatty acids and amino acid. All amino acids are going to have a carboxyl group. So they look like this here. Okay, next is our aminos, and they are NH2. So one nitrogen attached to two hydrogens, typically looks like this. And they are going to um, be amino acids. So compounds that are attached with the NH2 are called amines. And amino acids are an example. So all of our amino acids are going to have a carboxyl group and an amino group, and the NH2 is going to act as a base. So ammonia will pick up hydrogens from the solution. And next we have sulfhydryl, and it is going to be an S, so sulfur bonded with an H. And these compounds are called thiols. And the SH group stabilize the structure of protein. So they're very important for protein structure. And they, again, look like this. 
Next is our phosphates, and it's going to be one phosphate bound to four oxygen, and it connects carbon through an oxygen. And PO4 are anions with two negative charges. So one function of the PO4 is to transfer energy between organic molecules, or ATP. The next and the last one is methyl, and methyl would be CH3, and it is one carbon bound to three hydrogen, and this is going to affect the gene expression in DNA. So CH3 will look like this. Okay, so why is this so important? Well, the functional groups are going to help us make the building blocks of biological molecules. So these functional groups help us to make um, our proteins, our carbohydrates, our lipids, and our nucleic acid, our macromolecules, which will be important for us to know for our next lecture um, all about macromolecules. So I hope this helped you, and I hope you have a great night. Study on.